Uh, but let, mo moving on to the next uh, lead, uh, lead question, uh, this from Assembly Member Sean Berry. Thank you very much, Chair, and for that reminder about timings. Uh, my timing is even tighter, I'm afraid, so just to say. Um, I want to start with um, Martin McRae, if that's all right. Um, I, I know that we've, we've just discussed the fact that, that London has been behind in, in vaccinating the over 80s and the fact that there is differences between boroughs. It has, I think, been hard for, for both you and us to get up to date, detailed borough by borough data sort of collated at a London level. Um, and I just wanted to check what your progress was on, on making that data available to us so we can keep an eye on things on a, on a more day to day basis, which is the kind of level we're working at right now. So very quickly, um, so uh, what data we have is now available at local authority level. There was a very helpful letter from the Secretary of State for Health and for Housing uh, to local authorities this week saying that data should be used from by public health with political leaders and with the officers to share that data. That doesn't mean that we've got all the data we would like. Um, and I think just to... to curve expectations that you'll be able to uh, analyse your heart's content at every different perspective, that won't be the case. But the data that we have is available to be used. And when working with public health experts, that data becomes richer in its intelligence. So it's there now. Um, so, Tom, that, that will then go onto the, the dashboard that we're all able to use. Is that correct? So, so if Martin shares it with us, and I'll make sure that it's all validated, and then with the NHS approval, because we're very keen that we That's only fine. use data that's approved, I'll make sure it's shared with yourselves. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, my second question is about the well, the rollout to the to the next groups after we get the four priority groups finished, because those groups are larger. They are you know much larger in terms of numbers, and there's going to be a change in how things are organised. Um, things are going to come down more down to the local level. So can I ask? Um, how is that being organised and prioritised? Um, is it? Are you confident that it's happening all over London and will happen in a more even way? And what will be the involvement of, of boroughs? Because I'm not sure. Um, I'm a, sorry to declare. I'm a Camden councillor, and I think you know we're still keeping contingency in mind in Camden for getting more involved in this. But we're not clear yet. I don't think exactly what's going to be happening. I I want to know that's all in hand and that we're going to be able to scale this up. I know. Um, Dr Jamil talked about um, capacity being one of the issues, not so much now, and demand being a thing, but then at this point, when we go to these bigger groups, it's going to be capacity, isn't it? It's up to me. I, I, just, I don't know. I <laughs> you Ma Ma Martin Dr Jamil would be I, I, can, I, I can quickly answer that. So, so um, planning has to be at the local level. And that's what that letter also from the Secretaries of State suggested that needed to be more local. And I think that's right. That needs to involve primary care networks and GPs, needs to involve local councils. And we need to spread uh, uh, the amount, the capacity we've got to meet the supply we will receive to meet the demand that you say is going to be much, much bigger. So overall, we'll, we're aiming, we have plans, very detailed plans at Borough and ICS level. That's the sub-regional level um, uh, on a week by week basis for the next phase and they're being tested now and peer reviewed and I expect uh, and please share this uh, as a local council but in your networks we expect local authorities to be really involved in that process along with our GPs etc can't do it any other way this is a part yes the NHS gets some praise but it's a partnership list um, so it's really important the scale is significant. So London is a younger city than most other regions. Uh, so though we haven't had as many over 80s, we've got far more in the middle band um, and, uh, and therefore those next priorities. And that's great, but also a challenge. And of course, we've got everyone who got the first dose coming back for a second. So the numbers that will go through are significant. And we still expect about 70 to 75 percent of activity you go through GPs, but we will have to start to use other sites. And uh, we are already, but local pharmacists, uh, uh, community centres, churches, etc., they're starting, but we need to build that up, and the plans are in place. 
Okay, um, Dr. Jamil, do you have anything to add on, on those points? Thank you. I was hoping you'd ask. Um, so I think, for, firstly, uh, we've, we've got to be clear, there is capacity. The problem is being unable to plan in advance. So I can stand up clinics and run them and staff them, no problem. I just need to know what is expected of me. And that's changing from two to three days. You know, that, that's the sort of notice period I get. And if we just take crude numbers, say 100 GP vaccination sites, and if they can deliver 1,000 a day, you know, you, you've got 100,000 vaccines every day, okay? 700,000 a week. That's the sort of capacity we can stand up. We just need to know in advance. Um, and then just... I just wanted to add a little bit about the, the massive confusion that's ongoing at the moment, because we've got these letter drops happening to pay on patients' doorstops and a national booking site calling patients to book into the mass vaccination sites, to book into the pharmacy sites, whilst general practice is also contacting the exact same cohort of patients. So there was quite a bit of confusion and quite a bit of duplication of effort and time being wasted of clinicians. That has a problem and impacts capacity. So we do need to sort this mess out a little bit. Oh, that does sound very worrying if there's duplication of effort. Absolutely. Um, in, in terms of the boroughs, I mean, boroughs also have a, a, a great way, you know, they've got methods of contacting residents. Is that being coordinated well enough as well? If it's, I'm just slightly worried now. I think we always have room for improvement. And what I would perhaps try and, and push forward is the need to have very much that partnership approach across a system to look at what mass vaccination sites there are, what pharmacy sites there are, what capacity is there across the system with the trust and the local GP vaccination sites and who best is targeted in which manner and coordinating that. And I, I honestly cannot say that that is happening. In some areas of the country it is. In my patch in London, I'm actually a Camden GP. <laughs> and in North Central London, I'm not entirely clear that that's happening as well as it can, although, you know, it's better than most other areas in the country. OK, I've got 20 seconds, but um, Tom, you wanted to come in. Uh, that might be a useful question you might wish to ask the Minister, how we ensure we have national coordination of booking with local coordination. Because I had a few patients who were confused. They thought they were being offered their second dose, but in fact they were mistakenly being offered a first dose. So it is quite important to make sure we have a clear system of how patients are invited in. And I'm sure the Minister probably has a greater oversight of that and um, will be working to ensure that it's as smooth as possible. Okay, thank you. Hopefully some of my colleagues will pick up these points. My time is out.